जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहा हरे जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहा हरे जय गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवार धा हर गो जय गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवार धा हे है गोपी Yeri Ye Sourananda Braja Janahandhya Nhaya Ye Sourananda Braja Janahandhya Nhaya Jamunathira Vahana जमून थेरा भान छा यमुनति हे जय राध भारभा कुंज बिहा हरे राय कुंजाभ्याम हे जय राधम भाधवा कुंजाभ्या हे हम कुंजाभ्या हे जय गोपी जनवाम गिरिवार धा हे राय हे जय गोपी जनवा गिरिवार धा हे है गोपी गिरिवार सौरनंदन भजाधर हंझन हय सौर नंदन भज झन हंझमून थेरा भार छा हे अमून दी जमून थेरा भार छा हे अमून जय राधम भाधवाम कुंज बिहा हे है हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे राम हरे राम 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 जय पंच 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 जय पंच जय जय प्रभु फरा प्रभु फरा प्रभु फरा शील प्रभु फरा
Gaur Premanande Hari 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 Bol Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 12 Mohini Murti bewilders Lord Shiva. This is text number 36. Atavagata Mahatmya Atmano Jagat Atmya Manaha Apariya Virjasya Namenetad Uhad Bhutam Atavagata Mahat Atavagata Mahatmya Atmano jagat atmanaha apra apariya viryasya name netar uhad bhutam atavagata mahatya atmano jagat atmanaha Apariya Viryasya Anamene Taruha Bhutam Anyone else? <laughs> Ata, <coughs> thus, avagata, being fully convinced about, mahatmya, the greatness, atmanaha, of himself, jagat atmanaha, and of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Aparigyaya Viryasya, one who has unlimited potency. Na, not. May, nay, did consider. Tut, the miraculous activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In bewildering him, uha, certainly, abutam, as wonderful. <laughs> Translation, thus, Lord Shiva could understand his position and that of the Supreme Personality of Godhead who has unlimited potencies. Having reached this understanding, he was not at all surprised by the wonderful way Lord Vishnu had acted upon him. 
Please repeat, thus Lord Shiva could understand his position and that of the Supreme Personality of Godhead who has unlimited potencies. Having reached this understanding, he was not at all surprised by the wonderful way Lord Vishnu had acted upon him. Purport. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is known as all-powerful because no one can excel him in any activity. <clears throat> in Bhagavad Gita 7.7, .7, the Lord says, Mata parataram nanyat kinchirasti dananjayaha. O conqueror of wealth, there is no truth superior to me, nor can no one can equal the Lord or be greater than the Lord. For he is the master of everyone. As stated in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, chapter 5, verse 142, Ekala Ishwa Krishna Ara Sabha Brita. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is the only master of everyone, including Lord Shiva, what to speak of others. Lord Shiva was already aware of the supreme power of Lord Vishnu, but when he was actually put in bewilderment, he felt proud to have such an exalted master. Mm. Namaste, Saraswati Devi Goldavari Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pasyatyare Satarine Panchakopa Dharu Vishya Kripa Sindhu Beva Chabatitanam Bhavani Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nittananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasiri Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. we get two essential points from this verse, maybe there, there is more, but two outstanding. As Ekala uh, Ishwa Krishna Arasa Brita, the only master is Krishna, and there's no one superior to him. Nityo nityanam chaitan is chaitananam eko bahunam bidadati kaman. It's also mentioned in the Sweta Swatara Upanishads that there is one eternal who maintains all the other eternals, and no one is equal to that person and no one is greater to him. Ishwara Parma Krishna Satchirananda Vigraha Anadi Radhi Govinda Sarvakarana Karna. Aham sarvasya prabhavo mata savar papartante iti matua vajante maut buddha bhava saman vitaha nanya for devotional service. Because without coming to that understanding, all of our activities are really not directed in the right way. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God and He is the only worshipable object. <laughs> um, and that's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita in the last purport in the sixth chapter where it talks about bhaja, bhajate that uh, there are persons who are honored, but only one is worshipped, and that is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We honor the demigods. We honor all as we honor, honor all living entities because in one sense they are, not in one sense, in the absolute sense, they're all part and parcel of that same one personality of Godhead. But there's one that's only worthy of, of worship, and that is Krishna. And when we say Krishna, that means Krishna and his expansions also. His incarnations. Uh, that is the the uh, manifestations of his personal form. 
And so this verse really wants to illustrate, and Prabhupada, you see when Prabhupada gets into it, he really gets into it. He likes to make that point that Krishna is the, the Supreme Lord, and that's where we should focus our consciousness and worship. Uh, when that is uh, understood, then enthusiasm and devotional service in, in waxes increases more and more. And to understand that is actually the foundation of understanding everything. Otherwise, whatever knowledge we have, it's all uh, theoretical. But it becomes realized when we understand that there's one source and there's one worshipable object. And everything that is in existence, both material and spiritual, is actually uh, emanating from that one personality. <laughs> um, he, even the, and Krishna, it's he's so, uh, what we say, diverse in his manifestations, not only of himself, but even in the creative manifestations, that he can create something so small that you can't see it. And he can create something so big that it's impossible to even understand it. <laughs> he can do anything. He, uh, when that, that Mensa Society was uh, approaching Prabhupada in uh, London, Shamasundar had arranged for these different personalities to meet Prabhupada. Prabhupada was, wanted some action. He was in London, he said, bring some important people. <laughs> and so Shamsundar was uh, looking for people, and he came across so many different people, that poets and some writers and some people who were famous on a local level. Uh, he did a real, he did a good, pretty good service by bringing many interesting people. And you can read, it's all during the mostly during the summer of 1973 when Prabhupada was there for the Rati Yatra. And uh, there was one society that he, he contacted, they were called Mensa. And they were, uh, their whole program was to take philosophical teachings and try to understand deeper and discuss it. They were somewhat of a, you know, a, a debating society, a, the society that likes to explore deeper philosophical topics. Uh, that's an idea. Now we should do that in our we should do that in our uh, society. Create groups of devotees. Just come together and around philosophical teachings, and just discuss it. Actually, that started in London. There was one very senior devotee. He contacted me and he said, "Do you want to start this little philosophical group?" And we started it, and we did it online, and some of the, I mean, I was dwarfed by some of the intellectuals that were on there. There was Mother Narayani, she was there, Rupa Vilas, and <laughs> a few other people. And uh, we, were do, we would take different parts of the Shastras and discuss things. And sometimes when we get stuck, we, we would get stuck once in a while, We'd always go to, to Narayani, <laughs> and she would give the understanding. She's so learned, it's amazing. She has such knowledge of, the, of Shastra, and it's, she's just like a walking, walking scripture. <laughs> and so we were doing that for a while. Somehow, after a while, it, sounded, it died out. But that's, an, that's a nice idea, just create little philosophical groups, maybe three or four devotees, they come together and just take parts of the scriptures and just discuss it. And you'll see, it's, it's actually quite interesting what are some of the things that you reveal in the discussions. Yeah, that's nice. And, and that's, our, that's our philosophy. Bodhi antas paras param kati antas chamam nicham tushyanti cha ramanti cha. The Bodhi's coming together and talking about philosophical and spiritual principles ideas. Um, so that helps to uh, go deeper into our relationship with Krishna because we always start seeing the dynamicism of how how complete Krishna is in all categories. <laughs> Just like it says that in all philosophical teachings there is always some element of bhakti. 
there's a statement, I think, somewhere in the Shastras that mentions this. I can't remember. But I think it was by Jiva Goswami in his Sandarvas. Yeah, he was explaining that you'll find bhakti in every every philosophy, but sometimes just a grain of bhakti, it's just so small. And then as you go, you'll find some more and more and more and more. And then when you get to real bhakti or pure bhakti, then that's the essence. So, uh, yeah, these are just some things. So Shiva, he's um, he's been kind of put into a, an embarrassing situation in one sense and maybe he'll be known later on as being bewildered but he doesn't care <laughs> because he's bewildered by the person who is his worshipful object Lord Vishnu himself and so he's feeling proud boy I have such a wonderful master <laughs> not like oh what did you do to me <laughs> No, he, he was thinking, boy, I'm so fortunate. <laughs> I got a master that is so great that, you know, I don't want to go anywhere else. <laughs> this person is, and I don't even understand how great he is. I thought I knew, and I thought, you know, I could somehow out, be, out dance him, but he bewildered me. And I'm not the one to be bewildered. You know, that's Shiva, so... <laughs> So now he's feeling proud. So feeling proud of Krishna or feeling proud of um, having a, well, we also might take it also being proud of our spiritual master or being proud of some superior who is um, giving us, uh, you know, guidance in Krishna consciousness. That kind of pride is is authorized because it, it, it just increases one's bhakti. <laughs> That's the whole point. It brings about a greater sense of bhakti when we when we appreciate someone who is great, and that appreciation helps to us to understand even more about that person, and maybe we understand more of the greatness and that, the qualities like that. So we, when we apply that to Krishna, it becomes unlimited. Then you want to know more about Krishna. Then you want to read more about Krishna. You want to hear more about Krishna. You want to learn just more and more, like what, why he does what he does and what he does, and so many things. So th this is Krishna consciousness. It just kind of inspires one to um, into the knowledge of greatness, <laughs> because when you say great. You don't really say much. <laughs> Prabhupada would take issue with that. He would say, if you say someone is great, that's nice, but what does it mean? And then you have to describe the qualities that make up that greatness or the activities that make up that greatness. And well, then you get an understanding of what is greatness. So when the Mensa Society came to talk to Srila Prabhupada, uh, Prabhupada was saying, Krishna is all-powerful. And he can do anything. And he emphasized that point. He can do anything. And you hear many of Prabhupada's lectures when he talks about that. And he would say he can turn night into day and day into night. And then you <laughs> try to figure that one out. <laughs> anyway, and so, and he can bewilder anyone. Um, and then question came from the Mensa Society. Well, if he's so great, can he create a rock he can't lift? <laughs> so, if you answer any side, you make, you minimize Krishna's power. <laughs> if you say yes, then you minimize his lifting power. And if you say no, then you minimize his creating power. <laughs> So, trick question, you know, when you meet philosophical people, they, they know how to try to bewilder you by their word jugglery. The Mayavadis are expert at that. And uh, so Prabhupada, you know, you can't, you can't defeat Prabhupada. He's just, he's on, he's like way ahead of everybody. So Prabhupada said, yes, he can create a rock he can't lift, and then he'll lift it. <laughs> So 
So yeah, so in, in that sense, you know, that was the conclusion. That whatever you think he can't do, he can do. <laughs> but what what is what is the real greatness of Krishna? I mean, there's so many aspects to his greatness that it's just, you know, volumes and volumes and tons of literature describing his greatness. But what is his greatness? That he becomes the servant of his devotees. <laughs> He takes the the humble position, just like I was reading yesterday in Srimad Bhagavatam, when Lord Balaram came to the the sages who were performing this yagya, and they had just selected Romaharshan Sutta as being the official brahmana. He wasn't even a brahmana; he was from mixed caste, but they empowered him with brahminical tejas and gave him that position. And uh, so now, feeling very qualified, he was sitting on a very high seat. Balaram walks in. <laughs> and Balaram, as soon as he walks in, all of the sages, they were all brahmanas, they immediately rose up with folded hands and they started to greet Balaram with so many sweet words and welcomed him. But Ramahar Sutta didn't do anything. <laughs> he simply sat on, on his seat and didn't make any gesture to Balaram. Balaram noted it, and Balaram immediately became a little bit disturbed and started speaking about that. Who is this person? He's coming from a mixed caste, and he, so many things that he said. He is like an actor playing a role on a stage. His knowledge is simply, you know, uh, acting. He doesn't have any knowledge because if he had knowledge, he would honor the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Balaram came, became pretty strong. <laughs> and then he took a piece of kusa grass. I don't know if you've ever seen kusa grass. When, we had, when I was in India, they showed me what some kusa grass is. It's pretty sharp. It's like a blade almost. And uh, it's big. Big pieces. And uh, he took it and he just touched it. It didn't say he threw it or stabbed him or anything. <laughs> touched uh, Romahard Sutta and that was it. He was finished. He died <laughs> right on the spot. And the sages, they said, Alas, alas, what has been done? What has been done? <laughs> you know, they just elected him <laughs> and now he's gone. <laughs> he didn't even say he was leaving. He just left. <laughs> by Balaram's arrangement. And so Balaram could, and then they started to somewhat find fault with Balaram. Balaram, you broke religious principles. <laughs> they said that, the Brahmins said that to Balaram. You, no, they, they said, you have act, acted irreligiously. Basically, that's what they said. That's in the text. And Balaram was listening. He wasn't taking offense at all. And then he said, all right, then should I do some atonement? <laughs> you know, he's the Supreme Lord. He doesn't make mistakes. And now the Brahmins are feeling bereft of their leader, at least for the yagya. And uh, so Balaram takes a really humble position and says, well, should I... What can I do to make amends? Should I bring him back to life? No, 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 no. <laughs> They're not interested in it. But they immediately, they, find, they found some service for Balaram. The Brahmins thought, well, we have this, this one demon and he is Bal, Balvala. And he comes occasionally and in the middle of our yagyas, he throws all kinds of nasty substances all over the yagyas and just defecates and defiles our whole yagya and we, we have we have to throw the whole yagya out and start again <laughs> it's all you know destroyed and so we can't perform yagyas because of him so um, Balaram take care of him <laughs> okay and Balaram says all right and then that's the next chapter I haven't read it yet <laughs> so I'm, I'm hopefully I'll read that today <laughs> anyway but this is, you know, Balaram, is, the point was Balaram took the uh, humble position. And although the Brahmanas 
found some fault with him. He didn't he didn't uh, respond in a negative way or any way. He simply accepted. So we see when the Lord comes, many times he acts as a humble servant of his devotees, just like when Krishna, during the Rajasuya sacrifice, when King Yudhisthira came, and different devotees and personalities had different services. Uh, Bhima was the cook, and you know Arjuna, he had a particular service. Everybody had a particular service for the sacrifice. What was Krishna's service? Krishna had to wash the feet of all of the brahmanas when they came for the yajna. That was Krishna's seva. <laughs> the Supreme Personality of Godhead is washing the feet of his devotees. <laughs> so when we speak of greatness, that is hard to understand. Prabhupada always tells that one particular story. It's quite a common pastime. There was one South Indian Brahmana. He was leaving me in the Sri Rangam temple. Have you ever been to Sri Rangam? Yes. I'm sure Maharaj has been there. Sri Rangam temple? In South India? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Tirupati. Yeah. Well, Prabhupada was saying Sri Rangam in his lecture. So. Yeah, Sri Rangam is the place and the temple is. Yeah. No? Ranganath, yeah. Ranganath. Yeah, Ranganath. Yeah. And uh, that's not Tirupati, that's Balaji, that's Vantekeshwar, that's, yeah. So he was in the Ranganath, I uh, mean, yeah, Sri Rangam, Ranganath temple. And um, it was a Brahmana, but he was illiterate. But his guru had given him a so, uh, service to read every day Srimad Bhagavad Gita. And uh, he couldn't read. <laughs> he was illiterate. So, uh, and the other brahmanas, when they would see him trying to read, he would just be turning the pages, you know. They would just kind of laugh and kind of chide him a little. And he, after a while, he, start, he stopped paying attention to them. <laughs> and he just kept doing his service. But then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu happened to be coming just at around that same time when he was there. So Mahaprabhu noticed him, and he was just turning the pages, and he was going, ah. And uh, so he's watching him, and he said, Brahmana, what are you doing? But the Brahmana usually would refuse to listen to anyone, but he could understand this person was not making fun of me. He said, oh, well, actually... My Guru Maharaj, he has given me this service to read every day Srimad Bhagavad Gita. But I'm illiterate. Jai Sisi Pancha Tattva Ki Jai. I'm illiterate and I can't read, so I'm just turning the pages. <laughs> so Mahaprabhu said, but I can see you're showing some emotions. You're actually shedding tears. How is that? You can't read? He said, oh, well. And he pointed to a picture of Krishna driving the chariot for Arjun. And Krishna is taking the position of the chariot driver for his devotee. So seeing that, his heart became melted that, oh, here's the great Supreme Personality of Godhead. He's taking such a menial position just to serve his devotee. And when, he's, when he felt like that, he started to show emotion. And Mahaprabhu immediately said, you have understood Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> you have understood Bhagavad Gita. Now this is one of the qualities or the principles of Krishna's greatness that he becomes the servant of his devotees. Of course, the devotee never wants the Lord to serve, but the Lord always sometimes figures out ways to serve his devotees. He, uh, he's always doing something. You don't even know it. He's serving his devotees in different ways. We, we can see just day to day when we carry on our activities how things happen. 
sometimes we wonder how things happen, and it's just Krishna's arrangement. He's always some. He's always there with his devotees. He's reminding us. Prabhupada said he's always telling you what you want to do next. You have some idea what you want to do, and he reminds you through your intelligence, through your mind, like that. So you're thinking, oh. Yeah, I just remember what I'm supposed to do. That remembrance is Krishna. <laughs> that remembrance is Krishna. And that, that's, how, that's how close he's connected to his devotees. So here we see uh, how Lord Shiva is. Um, he's so happy and he's very proud of his master. And well, as it goes on, you can see how he glorifies the Lord. Okay, so we'll stop here and see if there's any comments, questions. Okay, thank you. Srimad Bhagavad. Tam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Premanande, Hari Hari Bo.